In this video, we're going to go over single replacement reactions. So let's start with the first one. Let's say if you have aluminum metal placed in a solution of copper chloride. What are the products of this reaction? And also, how can you write the net ionic equation? So in a single replacement reaction, aluminum metal is going to replace copper metal. And in the process, aluminum is going to pair up with chlorine. As a metal, aluminum has a plus three charge and chlorine has a minus one charge. So to write the formula between aluminum and chlorine, you need to use the crisscross method. So it's gonna be Al1 Cl3. Now, as copper is displaced out of the solution, it's gonna come out as Cu. Aluminum is a metal, so it's in a solid phase, and copper is in a solid phase. Copper chloride, is it soluble or insoluble? What would you say? Now, you need to know your solubility rules. Chlorides are usually soluble except with silver, lead, and mercury. So copper chloride is in the aqueous phase, and the same is true for aluminum chloride. So now the next thing we need to do is balance the single replacement reaction. So feel free to pause the video and balance it. So notice that we have two chlorine atoms on the left and three on the right. What is the least common multiple of 2 and 3? The LCM of 2 and 3 is 6. So what we need to do is try to get 6 chlorine atoms on both sides. Therefore, we need to put a 3 in front of CuCl2 and a 2 in front of AlCl3. So now we have 6 chlorine atoms. But notice that we have 3 copper atoms on the left. So we need a 3 in front of Cu. And we have 2 aluminum atoms on the right. So we need a 2 in front of Al. So now the reaction is balanced. Now before we write the net ionic equation, how can we determine if this reaction is going to work in the first place? Is aluminum strong enough to displace copper out of the solution? Now there's something called the activity series. And if you don't have it, you can go to Google Images and look it up. On the activity series, you'll see like sodium at the top, aluminum, Fe, copper, hydrogen, I mean before copper, you have hydrogen, and then copper, and then Ag. Now these are not all of the elements, but this is just some of them. The metals at the top of the activity series are very reactive. The metals at the bottom, like silver or gold, they're less reactive or non-reactive. So because aluminum is higher than copper on the activity series, that means aluminum is more reactive than copper. So it's strong enough to displace copper out of the solution. So this reaction will work. So typically in a single replacement reaction, you'll have like a, a pure element and a compound. If the metal is above the metal ion, then it's gonna work. If copper was above aluminum, in the reaction, it will not work. Now, what's the first thing that we need to do to write the net ionic equation? The first thing is we need to write the total ionic equation. So everything that's in the aqueous phase, we need to separate it into ions. So aluminum, which is a solid, we're going to leave it the way it is. We're not going to change it. Now we have two aluminum atoms, so we got to put the two in front of Al. Now in 3CuCl2, we have three copper ions, and we have six chloride ions. On the right side, we have two aluminum plus three ions, and we have six chloride ions. 
and we have three copper atoms. So Cu and Al is still in the solid phase. All of the ions are in the aqueous phase. So this is the total ionic equation. Now our next step is to eliminate the specks to the ions. The specks to the ions are the ions that are found exactly the same on both sides of the reaction. So the only specks to the ions that we have are the chloride ions. So now what remains represents the net ionic equation. So it's going to be two aluminum atoms in the solid phase plus three copper ions in the aqueous phase and that's going to produce two aluminum ions in the aqueous phase and three copper atoms. Single replacement reactions are redox reactions because the way this reaction works is by means of a transfer of electrons. As you can see, the aluminum metal turned into the aluminum plus three cation. That means that it lost three electrons, so aluminum was oxidized. Now the copper plus two ion, it went from plus two to zero. So therefore, each copper ion gained two electrons, which means copper was reduced. Whenever a substance gained electrons, it's reduction. Whenever it loses electrons, it's oxidation. Because aluminum was oxidized, it is the reducing agent in the reaction. Now, because the copper two ion was reduced, it is the oxidizing agent. Now, let's try another example. Consider the reaction between zinc metal and hydrochloric acid. What are the products of this reaction? So first, is zinc strong enough to displace hydrogen out of the solution? Will this reaction even work? So below aluminum, you have zinc, and then you have Fe, and there's hydrogen, copper, silver, and gold. On the activity series, zinc is above hydrogen. So zinc is strong enough to displace hydrogen out of the solution. So this reaction will work. So zinc is going to pair up with chlorine. Zinc as an ion typically has a plus two charge. And the chloride ion has a minus one charge. So using the crisscross method, it's going to be Zn1Cl2. Now hydrogen is going to be by itself as a pure element. Hydrogen is a diatomic element, so it exists as H2. So now we need to balance the reaction. To balance it, all we need to do is put a 2 in front of HCl. Everything else has a 1 in front of it. Now we need to write the phases. So zinc is a metal, it's a solid. Hydrogen is a gas. And the other two compounds are aqueous. Whenever you have an acid like HCl, most acids dissolve in water. So they're in the aqueous phase. And zinc chloride is soluble. The only chlorides that are not soluble are silver, lead, and mercury. At least those are the ones you have to know. Now that we have a balanced reaction, let's go ahead and write the total ionic equation. So zinc, which is a solid, it's going to stay the way it is. In HCl, we have two H plus ions and two chloride ions. So don't forget to distribute the two. Now on the right side, in zinc chloride, we have the zinc 2 plus ion. We have also two chloride ions. And we have hydrogen gas. So what are the spectator ions in this reaction? Notice that it's the chloride ion. They appear exactly the same on both sides. So the net ionic equation is what remains. So we have solid zinc metal plus two H plus ions, which is in the aqueous phase. And that's going to produce the zinc plus two ion. 
and hydrogen gas. Now hydrogen gas is in the gaseous phase and zinc is in the aqueous phase. So that's how you can write the net ionic equation for this particular single replacement reaction. Now on the left side, which substance is oxidized and which one is reduced? Zinc was oxidized. Its oxidation state increased from 0 to 2. Whenever the oxidation state increases, that means that the element lost electrons. So that's why we could say zinc was oxidized. And keep in mind, the oxidation state for any pure element is always 0. Now for hydrogen, it went from 1 to 0. So hydrogen was reduced. Its oxidation number went down. It decreased, which means that hydrogen gained electrons. So the zinc metal is the reducing agent because it was oxidized. And the H plus ion is the oxidizing agent because it was reduced. Metals are usually good reducing agents. These are the active metals, the metals that are on the top of the activity series. So like sodium, magnesium, aluminum, they're very good reducing agents. Non-metals like fluorine, chlorine, they're very good oxidizing agents. So reducing agents, they like to give away electrons. Oxidizing agents, they like to receive electrons. Now what would you do if you see a reaction that looks like this? Chlorine gas is bubbled through a solution of aqueous sodium bromide. What's going to happen? What products will be produced in this reaction? And will this reaction even work? So let's look at the activity series. For the halogens, fluorine is the most reactive. Then it's chlorine, and then bromine, and then iodine, or iodine. So chlorine is above bromine. That means elemental chlorine can displace bromide out of the solution. So this reaction will work. So if chlorine displaces bromine out of the solution, that means that chlorine is going to pair up with sodium. Sodium has a plus one charge. Chloride, as an ion, has a negative one charge. Whenever you write in the compound, the ion with the positive charge is usually written first. Now, because these two have the same charge, even though the sign is different, but the magnitude is the same, these two will combine in a 1 to 1 ratio. So it's Na1Cl1, but you don't need to write the 1. You can simply write it as NaCl. Now once bromine, once the bromide ion is displaced out of the solution, it's going to turn into elemental bromine, which is diatomic. So now we need to balance the reaction. So notice that we have two bromine atoms on the right side. So we got to put a 2 in front of NaBr. And we have two chlorine atoms on the left. So we need a 2 in front of NaCl. And so now the reaction is balanced. Before we can write the net ionic equation, we need to write the phases for every substance in this reaction. So what's the phase for chlorine? Chlorine is a gas, so we're going to put G. Bromine is a red liquid. Now, sodium bromide and sodium chloride, these ionic compounds are soluble. All of the group 1 metal cations, like sodium, lithium, potassium, are soluble. So we're going to put AQ for these two. So to write the total ionic equation, everything that is in the aqueous phase, we need to separate into ions. So chlorine is going to remain the same. And then we're going to have two Na plus ions and two bromide ions. On the right side, we're going to have two sodium cations and two chloride anions. A cation is simply a positively charged ion. An anion is a negatively charged ion. So now what are the spectator ions in this reaction? The only thing that doesn't do anything in this reaction is sodium. And as you can see, it looks the same on both sides of the reaction. 
So now what remains is the net ionic equation, which is Cl2 plus 2Br minus, and that turns into two chloride ions and elemental bromine. Let's not forget to write the phases in the net ionic equation. So the ions are going to be in the aqueous phase. And so this is it. This is the complete net ionic equation. Now, which element is the oxidizing agent and which one is the reducing agent? So the oxidation state for any pure element is zero. So chlorine goes from zero to negative one. So it decreased, it went down, so chlorine was reduced, which means it's the oxidizing agent. So that means that chlorine, it received electrons in this reaction. Bromide, it went from negative one to zero. If you go from negative one to zero on a number line, you're going to the right, which means the value is increasing. So the oxidation state of bromide went up from negative one to zero, which means that bromide, it lost electrons, it was oxidized which makes it the reducing agent in this reaction. Consider this reaction between iron metal and zinc chloride. So what are the products of this reaction? And will this reaction work? So on the activity series, we have aluminum, zinc, Fe, and hydrogen. Notice that the metal Fe is below zinc. So Fe is not strong enough to displace zinc out of the solution. So therefore, if you place iron metal in a solution of zinc chloride, you will observe no reaction. So there's no point in predicting the products of this reaction because nothing's going to happen. Try this example. Sodium metal with hydrofluoric acid. What are the products of this reaction? And will it work? Sodium is way above hydrogen on the activity series. So sodium is definitely strong enough to displace hydrogen out of the solution. So sodium is going to pair up with fluorine. As an ion, sodium has a plus one charge and fluoride has a minus one charge. So these two will combine in a one-to-one -one ratio, forming sodium fluoride. And hydrogen is going to be displaced out of the solution. So now our next step is to balance the reaction. So because we have two hydrogen atoms on the right side, we need a two in front of HF. And now we have two fluorine atoms on the left. So we're going to need a two in front of NAF. And a two here as well. So now the reaction is balanced. Sodium metal is a solid, H2 is a gas, sodium fluoride is soluble because sodium is an alkali metal, and alkali metals are usually soluble. Now what about HF? Acids usually dissolve well in water. So HF is going to be in an aqueous phase, but HF is a weak acid. In the other example early in this video, we had HCl, which is a strong acid. Strong acids ionize completely, but weak acids, they don't ionize very much. So therefore, even though HF is aqueous, because it doesn't ionize significantly in the net ionic equation or in, even in the total ionic equation, you should not separate HF into its ions because it's a weak acid and it doesn't ionize completely. So the only one that we're going to separate into ions is sodium fluoride. That's what you have to be careful with in this particular problem. So let's write the total ionic equation. So it's 2Na plus 2HF. So that's going to stay the same. Now this part, we're going to break it into ions. So we're going to have 2Na plus ions, 2 fluoride ions, and H2 gas. So notice that there are no spectated ions in this reaction. Everything is different on both sides of the equation. Therefore, this is one of those rare cases in which the total ionic equation is the same as the net ionic equation. So this is the answer. Now, don't forget to put the phases. Sodium is in a solid phase. 
hydrogen is in the gaseous phase, HF is aqueous, and the other two ions are in the aqueous phases. Sodium metal is the reducing agent. It was oxidized from 0 to plus 1. HF is the oxidizing agent. The hydrogen in HF went from plus 1 to 0. So HF was reduced. So that is it for this video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.